peace throughout the galaxy and at home. From the beginning of time, this one dream has persisted. To achieve such a goal, the Global Security Council was formed to protect world peace from those who would destroy it. The Eagle Riders were established. Five courageous young people whose cellular structure allows them to transform into powerful superheroes. <laughs> Capable of extraordinary abilities on their own, as a team, they are unstoppable. My name is Dr. Thaddeus Keen. I brought the Eagle Riders together, and together they will remain as long as they are needed to defend the global good. Report to the Global Security Council number G0X4, submitted by Dr. Thaddeus Keene. Vorak activity in North America had been escalating. The coastal cities, the deserts. We never knew where Malinox and his androids would attack next. <laughs> it's great being a part of global destruction. Malinox! Yes, you most supreme of beings. How can I possibly aspire to serve you? Enough of the meaningless flattery. Not so, old lexicon of old evil. What do you wish from me? Well, is the project proceeding on schedule? Yes, Master. Even better than that, if I may say. We'll be ready to begin shortly. And everything is under control? I do not believe there is anything that can stop us from tapping into the power hidden beneath this planet's surface. Registering 9.0 on the Richter scale just hit the southwest with devastating effect, as you've just seen. No way, Doctor. 9.0? Never heard of one that big. What's more, it shows no sign of stopping. Huh? You're talking about aftershocks, right? No. The main quake itself has been going on for 15 minutes now. But that's impossible. Who's ever heard of an earthquake continuing for 15 minutes? No one. Such events don't normally happen. At least, not in the natural order of things. This model shows the fault line running through the desert where the earthquake hit. It's not normally the scene of any major seismic activity. 
I believe something has disturbed the equilibrium of the subsurface rock with the following result. Whoa. Doesn't seem natural. Precisely right. I think someone has artificially accelerated the movement of these two tectonic plates. Whatever caused it, it's our job to find a way to stop it. Hey, this smells like the Borak. If so, you'd think they would have wanted to claim responsibility for it. They haven't. They will, I'm sure, before long. But before that happens, I propose we fly down there and get to the bottom of this. Okay, Eagle Riders, here we go. Kelly, what's our system status? All systems online and operational. Mickey, perimeter status? Perimeter cleared by Gateway City. Holly, what's our destination? Destination Phoenix, Arizona. Course plotted and laid in. Eagle Riders, what's our mission? To, to defend, defend the global good! good. I begin to lose patience with you, Malanox. You have failed me once again. Every cloud has a silver lining, Master. What is that supposed to mean? I'm sorry, it's an Earth expression, meaning that we can turn our misfortune into some kind of advantage. For example, if we claim that we intentionally began that earthquake and threatened to do the same to every city on this planet, then the Earthlings will surrender in no time. Very well. Proceed. <laughs> This time, Master, I promise I won't let you down. I did not often travel aboard the Ultra Eagle, but this mission required all my skills. Look at these fissures in the desert floor. They're deep enough to swallow a city. Those android punks, wait till I get my hands on them. Could the Vorak have this kind of power, Doctor? Let's find out. I developed the seismic probe for just this sort of situation. Once activated, it will drill into the Earth's mantle and head for the epicenter of the disturbance. Hopefully, it will find out what's causing the quake and transmit the data back to us. <laughs> that was quite a shock, wasn't it? And this is only the beginning, Earthling. Someone's got to stop him! The entire now. Earth is in danger! There's more to come, unless you surrender at once. The Eagle Riders landed at the site of the quake's epicenter and activated the probe. I needed them to make sure the initial descent went smoothly. I stayed on the ship to analyze the data as the probe made its way to the heart of the problem. Probe is probing steady at 100 meters and descending. Good. Approaching the epicenter of the disturbance. No irregularities detected in the subsurface strata. If the Vorak do have the power to cause such a calamity, then the emergency is even greater than I feared. There's nothing more we can do here. Let's go back to the Eagle. Right! Hey! Hmm. What? Leaving already? When the real fun is just about to begin? So, you Vorak creepazoids were responsible for this mess after all. Man, we walked right into it. Goodbye, Eagle Riders. What is that? Who was that guy? Joe! It was Joe, I know it was. No, no way. Well, I sure couldn't tell you who it was. It all happened so fast. It's Joe, I tell you. I saw his eyes. Joe! Joe! Come back! Oh. Impossible. It couldn't be. What's going on? It's deserted. Doctor? Dr. Keene? He could have left a note or something. This isn't like him. I sure hope nothing's happened. Hey! What's happening here? Good afternoon, Eagle Riders. Doctor, why are you driving Joe's Falcon Tracker? Simply this. I believe I finally found the way to put a stop to these earthquakes. That's oh, terrific okay. news. What's the plan? As you can see, I've mounted a thermal cobalt missile on top of the vehicle. If we can get close enough to the epicenter and launch it point blank, I believe the counter detonation will stabilize the subsurface strata. 
Are you sure the Falcon Tracker will be able to get deep enough? Yes, in fact, it's the only one of our vehicles capable of withstanding the extreme pressure and temperatures, but there's a catch. A catch? What's that? We need a pilot. Someone who knows the vehicle well and has all the instincts of a race car driver. What we need is someone like Joe. He's the only one who could drive the tracker like that. What I don't understand is why can't we just launch the missile from up here on the surface? Out of the question, I'm afraid. There's too much sand and rock between us and the target. There's no way of aiming the missile accurately, and if we're off by just a few meters, its impact will be neutralized. Let me drive it. No, Hunter, it would be too risky. We've got to find someone who's familiar with this vehicle. The Global Security Council is searching for someone right now. Oh, come on, Doctor. I can drive that stupid jalopy. Send me. I'm sorry, but I can't. What do you expect us to do then? Just stand around until the whole city of Phoenix does a vanishing act? I'm sorry, Doctor. I just can't do that. Come back, Hunter. Stop. We haven't the time, Doctor. Somebody's got to go. I... I am not ashamed to say that even my heart was filled with hope, thinking that the man approaching was no stranger at all. I had not allowed myself to believe Joseph Thax was still alive. But suddenly, the possibility was becoming real as the figure steadily approached us. Joe? Is it you? the Falcon Tracker except me. I don't want anyone putting dents in the fenders. Joe! That's Joe, all right? <laughs> Joe! You're alive. Oh, boy, we really missed you. You didn't even send us a postcard. <laughs> Joe. Kelly. You don't know how good it is to have you back. Still punch like a featherweight, Hunter. <laughs> You're still as big a pain in the neck as ever. Good to see ya. <laughs> hey, fess up. You're the one who's been helping us out all this time, right? Why the mystery? What's with the disguise? Why have you been hiding from us? Where have you been? Joe, you don't have to tell us any more than you want to, and then only when you're ready. But you might at the very least have let us know you were up and around, my boy. I should have. I'm sorry. All that matters now is that you're on the team again. Doctor, look! Hmm? The whole city's moving. Clearly, the seismic disturbances are getting much stronger. Yeah, and if that wasn't bad enough, look what's coming our way. Vorak are just full of surprises. I'm off to deliver that package of yours, Doctor. The rest of you just try to make sure that thing doesn't stop me. 
Good luck, Joe. You heard what the man said. Now move out! Right! right. Joe, I'll get that thing's attention. Watch your back, buddy. Switching to hovercraft mode. Time to sink my teeth right into those borax venom. Program the target coordinates, Doctor. Affirmative, Joe. The Falcon tracker's been fully programmed and knows just where to go. Good, because it's kind of dark down here and there aren't a lot of signposts. Tight squeeze up ahead. Good. I've always wanted to try this trick. Uh oh. I'm in the soup. Targeting. The epicenter is dead ahead, Doctor. Joe! Joe! <gasps> Joe! Thank goodness you're all right. We almost lost you again. I'm getting used to having close calls. It's amazing. The tracker's completely demolished, and you come out with barely a scratch on you. Hmm. Okay, so I'm lucky. Sue me. Well, I'm glad you're safe, but I'd like to know why you kept yourself hidden from us for so long. Come on, Joe, what's wrong? Out with it. Believe me, it wasn't because I didn't want to see every one of you again. After that last battle, I was in pretty bad shape. Fortunately, someone found me. Thanks to a revolutionary new medical process of his, I miraculously pulled through. He's a remarkable man. His name is Professor Andrew. Professor Andrew? You know him, Doctor? Isn't he the one who told us he used to work for the Borak? That's right. But, Joe, that still doesn't explain why you helped us out all those times and didn't just show yourself. I told myself that I could no longer be an eagle rider. I must never see any one of you again. I couldn't stick to it. But the point is, you're better off without me. You've got to understand, it was for your sake I kept away, not my own. What? 
I'm not the man I was. I'm different now. All I care about is getting revenge on the Vorak. I want to make them pay for what they did. I hate them. Do you hear me? I hate them! Joe, I know what the problem is. You're afraid you'd become too emotional to be a good soldier. Well, buddy, that mission you just ran looked pretty darn good to me. I'm afraid I can't accept your resignation. Huh? Well, if there's one thing I didn't miss while I was away, it's being lectured at by you. <laughs> Welcome back, Joe. It's good to be back, Hunter. So has anything changed while I was away? Well, now let me think about that. New ship, new gadgets, and the same old Vorak. I conclude this report to the Global Security Council with my official reinstatement of Joe Fax to his previous position as security officer, second in command of the Eagle Riders. Vorak, beware. Get ready for fun and fantasy with three heroic teens and their animal best friends. They'll ride the wild magic into the adventure of their lives to save an enchanted land from evil forces. In Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders, right here on WB11.